You may have seen the story about how uh, back in the day, um, Harvard scientists were paid a large amount of money to, uh, according to them, suppress the results on how related to certain health problems sugar is. And instead, we're told to focus the attacks on fat in the diet. Um, this was a big story yesterday, I want to say, mm -hmm. but if you've seen certain documentaries have, that have come out over the last few years, you know the story. Uh, money goes into certain research, and that research ends up being influenced by the people who are providing the money. Mm. Well, there's a great article that we read um, that, was, that pointed out four other instances where this went down in the past, and it's high time that you know about it. First off, Coca-Cola's anti-obesity initiative... Um, they put $1.5 million uh, to a donation to start the nonprofit Global Energy Balance Network. Now, according to a New York University professor, um, the Global Energy Balance Network is nothing but a front for Coca-Cola. Uh, Coca-Cola's agenda here is very clear. Get these researchers to confuse the science and deflect the attention from dietary intake, instead putting the focus on... Um, Exercise. They told people to go exercise. Oh, her name is Marion Nestle, by the way. Not that wasn't from the Nestle Corporation. Good point. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, Nestle. Who knows? She might be in big Nestle's yeah. pocket. Um, the second, soda-funded studies are more likely to report no link between soda and obesity. Um, in fact, they're five times more likely to do so. But there's research that is free from being funded that comes out. In the opposite, uh, that's there's one called the circulation study. Circulation researchers attribute attributed 184,000 deaths worldwide each year to diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and cancer from sugar-sweetened beverages. Um, the third one is candy companies that research their own products. Uh, according to research backed by a trade association that represents Butterfingers, Hershey's, Skittles, um, children who ate candy tended to be thinner than those who didn't. Convenient, right? <laughs> like, they, the well, candy company said you convenient. Yeah. And finally, Palm Wonderful came under fire from the FTC. Um, there's 32 grams of sugar for every eight ounces of Palm Wonderful you drink. And in fact, according to this article, Palm spent $34 million to fund pomegranate juice research and then spun the results to make the juice look like it prevented the disease. The FTC filed a complaint against the company for deceptive and mis misleading advertising in 2010. Um, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's well, not surprising. No. No, because a lot of these uh, researchers, they need funding, right? Where is this funding going to come from? I'm not saying it's good. I'm saying the, the whole setup is, is already crooked or already posed to be crooked. Um, according to Marion Nestle, or I hope it's not Nestle, who you quoted earlier, uh, she's from NYU. She spent a year tracking industry-funded uh, research studies, food studies, and she found that about 90% of the 170 companies she monitored, uh, they, the researchers ended up making very favorable uh, diagnoses or results uh, toward these companies. So, for instance, there's one from uh, Welch's Grape that found that juice may boost brain function. Convenient, right? And Quaker Oats, if they found, or a study funded by Quaker Oats found that if you eat a breakfast full of hot oatmeal, you're going to be fuller longer. Yeah, because <laughs> you're full of oatmeal. Because you're full what of oatmeal. What does fuller longer mean? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, uh, but Coca-Cola did report $132.8 million towards scientific research and partnerships. Oh, wow. Unbelievable. I mean, my take on it is in the broader perspective. I was like, history loves to remind us how well there's money to be paid and money to be made. People will be willing to take it and screw over the majority. Like, it's, by the way, I was, it's funny because I was mentioning on All Star Tuesday that I was watching just so uh, some a documentary into how Ivy League professors are coincidentally like to take some money under the table in order to provide the most amount of bullshit possibly for our observation and, and our absorption, should I say. Like, I remember... Uh, when you have Professor Frederick Mishkin, who was the, uh, the professor at Columbia, who, of course, had the infamous uh, article about how I the Icelandic economy is so stable. It's the most, most stable thing out there. Go ahead, put your money in it. It's no problem. And then, of course, once it crashed, it emerged onto Matt Damon's documentary and how he was involved and took a th around $125,000. To, to write that uh, article. So it's not surprising, as you mentioned, Brett, and it's not surprising that it happened back in the 60s. People will learn the tricks of the trade from there and continuously push it forward. Why 
Uh, we have the, the Cultural High, which is another great documentary I advise checking out on Netflix and how certain pharmaceutical companies will consistently pay in order for researchers to talk about how marijuana is, is, no, is going to hinder your health. It's worse for you than drugs and alcohol and other, other, other forms of drugs and alcohol and cigarettes so that we don't legalize it so that they can continue to make their profits from the things that we're going to go out and buy legally. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, we did a video f on the Pop Trigger channel about what happens to your body right after you drink Coca-Cola. And it is shocking to me how these people try to make it seem like diet has a far smaller influence on how you uh, feel in your body and, you know, certain fat aggregation than exercise. Yes, you should have a combination of diet and exercise, but if you ask any personal trainer, they say, listen, you should stop Eat, first of all, stop drinking soda. Yeah. Because what happens is your liver's job is to take it all the uh, sugar that comes in, and as much as it can, it will give you energy. But what it can't make into energy fast enough, it turns into fat. At the Young Turks, we believe in change. We believe we can change the media, make it more independent. Come do it with us. TYTnetwork.com/slash/join.